Oh, hi. It's your boy, Kilo Loco, and today we're going to be going over some custom frameworks. And I'm going to be showing you how to share some code, baby. Yeah. Now, the reason why I chose this particular topic, which isn't too heavily, you know, Swift related, I mean, you could technically do this in Objective C too, um, is because, you know, we got to start. You gotta start sharing code. You gotta you gotta help other people out. You gotta start looking into open source things like that. And I mean, at least that's what I'm trying to do. So I'm starting to look into open source, and you know, I had to figure this out. So I thought I'd show you guys how to do it. So anyway, the tools that we're gonna be using Xcode nine, Swift four, and um, you know, skill level beginner. All you really need to know is, are like some of the basics of access control. Um, if you don't know, I have a video that's completely dedicated to access control. Um, feel free to check that out. And, um, you know, I'll still be touching on it, but yeah. And then, um, you know, where to find this project? Right here. Bam. Right there. Right there. Oh, yeah. And that would be the finished project. We won't be started. We won't have a starter project because we're doing this from the very, very beginning, baby. Oh, yeah. So let's get right on into it. Kyle, stop talking. Start showing. All right. First thing that you want to do, single view application. Well, Kyle, I want to make a framework. Well, hold on, little buddy. What you got to do is you have to make sure that your your code is working. It's all tested out and it works fine. Okay. So, yeah, just uh, do that first. So what we'll do is um, we'll just call this uh, testing my code. We'll just call that product testing my code. And uh, yeah. You can do it whatever you want. Um, and we'll just save this over to, you know, we're going to save it to KL Learning. And that's where I learn you. So, what we got to do, what we got to do today is we got to create a new file. And um, we're going to just create a new Swift file. That's fine. And we're just going to call this um, random. Um, random generator gener gen er a tor yeah see and I still probably spelled it wrong so who knows haha <laughs> see you guys don't have to be really good programmers to be uh you guys don't have to be really good spellers to be good programmers and you don't even have to be good speakers to be good programmers all right anyway um, what you would normally do is you would normally have some type of class and it would be called, you know, random uh, generator, right? It'd be called whatever you want. And um, by default, all of your stuff, whenever you declare it as class or function or variable or let or whatever, by default, it is set as internal, right? So that's, it's, it's the same thing. It, this is implied, right? internal is implied on almost everything that's just left out uh, whenever you don't specify access control so what we actually have to do is we have to turn this internal to public which is one um, one access level up and what public does is it gives a um, it gives um, it lends functionality from this code to other code that's not specifically related to this project so that it can be reused elsewhere and um with public uh, and open they both do that they so you could say either public or open now the only time that you really want to do open is if you wanted somebody to subclass this random generator or whatever like it whatever the thing that you wanted um to create if you want it to be like subclass and use polymorphism and things like that then um, that's when you would specify it to open but for the most part you're probably going to be fine with just public so we're just going to say public now for our random generator it's just going to have one um, static function so we would just do static func and then let's say we just wanted a string right and um, it's going to just return a string right and um, if we were okay hold on so that xcode um, doesn't try to bully us because you know how Xcode's a bully. And um, so, like, if we were to do this, right, remember that it is by default implicitly stating that this is internal. So, what you have to do is you have to explicitly state that it is public, it can be used outside of this framework. So, um, just keep that in mind public, right? 
Um, okay, so with our random string, we'll just create a random string. And what we'll do is, I don't know if you guys know this, but all you have to do to create a random string is just do um, UUID. And then I think you have to initialize it and then just do UUID string, right? And that'll give you a random string. And then if we wanted to do like um, a random number, we could just do public, remember public, static, and then func, and we'll just do um, integer, integer, integer. I think that's how you spell it. <laughs> oh God, you're terrible. All right, and then we'll return um, arc for random, and then we'll just cast this as an int, like so. And yeah, now we have a random integer. So now what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that our, our functions actually work before we actually transport or uh, take, copy and paste this code into our framework. So what we wanna do, and this is the whole entire point of, of doing this. We're just testing to make sure that the code that we're gonna be using in the framework actually works. Because if you don't do that, you gotta, you know, you gotta drag, you gotta drop, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. It's, it's, it's a headache. Follow Kyle's instructions. Okay, okay. So let random, you gotta know how to spell, random, random string equals our random generator dot string. Right? And then we're gonna do let ran, oh my God, Kyle. Random integer equals random generator dot integer and you know what I just saw something that would um, definitely help this uh, be a little bit better is um, we want to just make sure that you can't in instantiate an instance of this random generator right so what we want to do is we're just gonna say private in it like so that means that you can't initialize it you have to use one of these static functions all righty all righty then all right and then what we're gonna do is we just want to print the random string random string and we just want to print our random integer and we're gonna build that make sure that we have no errors and we shouldn't I think the only problem was it didn't save so okay so it built looking good all we have to do is we have to run this bad boy and make sure that everything everything gonna work so if everything works then we should just have you know a random string padow and a random integer chow, like so okay so now we know that our code works right so what we got to do is we're gonna wanna you know copy all this right make sure you copy it and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to Xcode we're gonna go up to file new project and then this is where you, the Coco touch framework comes in all oh, year all oh, year next and then you call it whatever you want I'm gonna call mine my sexy random random baby like so um, oh before I go any farther don't 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 be playing these games okay don't don't be put in spaces don't be put in no hyphens don't be put in no underscores I don't want to see none of that none of it um, you know just think about all the frameworks that you actually use inside your projects you import Alamo fire UI kit um, FBSDK you know things like these like this so follow those naming conventions I haven't tried it with the space because I don't like to run into errors if I don't have to just normal name like this come on guys one word you know no spaces no hyphens no special characters none of that just just come on come on come on all right all right all right so as you know you only have like two files you know in here you don't have to mess with either one of them it's one of them's a plist one of them's um, um, just a header file all you got to do is just click on this folder we're gonna create a new file guess what we're gonna call it we're gonna call it random generator random gener generator all right 
so like so and then what we do is we just paste in the code that we know works we want to do it this way because we already tested the code we know that it works and as you notice you can't really there's nothing to really run this on there's no device that you can run this on to see if it works there's no view there's none of that so that's why you have to do it um, you know separately so what we'll do is it doesn't really matter what you select here, but we just want to make sure that it runs, make sure that we get a build succeeded and everything is happy go lucky. Now, what we're going to see when we open up this bad boy products right here is, ooh, look at that. My sexy random baby dot framework. Look at that little little briefcase. Mm, little tool bar. Mm. All right. So, what we want to do is we're going to create a whole nother project. Kyle, you mean we have to make three projects just to do this? Well, no, like you need really only like one project. You could just do it all in your framework if you were like super confident about your code, which I would not recommend. Um, but we have the first project just to test out our code. We have the framework, which we're actually going to be using. Um, that's where we're going to have our code that we're sure that works. And then we're using a third project just to make sure that a project that has no association no association blah, blah blah no association with our framework can actually access the framework's um, methods right so that's what we're going to do we're going to go back and make a new single view application just any random project and we'll just say any random project and then i'm um, sure everything else was made on my desktop even though it wasn't supposed to um Okay, so now we have our random project open. What we want to do is we want to go back over to our framework where the little briefcase is just chilling. And what we want to do is we just want to drag that briefcase over here. Like so. Make sure copy items if needed. And make sure that you have the um, any random project or whatever your project name is uh, selected as the target. So we do that. What we're going to do is we're going to go down here to embedded binaries. We're going to click the little plus. You're going to see your, your awesome frameworks name right there, which you took a lot of time to think about. And then um, it's going to be right there. And now if we go to our view controller and we do import random, uh, my sexy random baby. Oh, yeah. And then if we do um, let random string equals um, random generator random generator dot string and then let random integer equals random generator whoa 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 dot integer and we print these bad boys out random string and random integer and we want to wrap that in quotes or not quotes. Come on, Kyle, learn your learn your symbols parentheses. And if we just go ahead and run this, we already have the SE uh, simulator working. So that'll be the quickest. Yeah. So if we go ahead and run this and everything worked out perfectly, then we should just see a random string and a random integer like Put out. Mm. Oh yeah. Look at it. Look at it in all of its glory. Yeah, so I mean pretty simple, pretty straightforward, right guys? So what I propose to you is that you start putting out some of these frameworks out on GitHub and you start sharing your code. Let other people benefit from your code, you know? Get out there. And what you'll find out is that um you know, when you make things open source, there'll be improvements to your code. And it's an easy way to see how somebody would improve your code. So you have to make something really awesome. Nobody's going to want to, you know, you know, uh, fork a random generator or whatever. But um, if you make something cool enough and you get enough people's attention, then what you can do is um, people will start working on it and they'll like they'll be like psych like oh crap this this thing exists like oh yeah let's um let's build it up and turn it into something awesome and then um what you'll be able to do is you'll see how your code transforms into this like super professional code and then um you know that's a that's a good way to learn so um yeah so that's how you do it um with frameworks 
If you're interested in Cocoa Pods, we'll definitely touch on that, but not in this video. I'm going to have an, another video I'm going to probably do next week uh, so that we can get out there and start, um, you know, doing Cocoa Pods for our, our custom frameworks and we can really start sharing stuff super easily. Um, I'm also going to look into Swift Package Manager. You don't even have to ask about that in Carthage. I'll, I'll even do that. I never worked with Carthage, but whatever, I'll, I'll do it for you. And yeah, we're going to start sharing code. We're going to start helping each other and we're going to all become better programmers together. So yeah, if you like the video, thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Make sure you do this. Make sure you do that. Well, I mean, just do something to make me feel good so that I keep wanting to make these videos and I know that they're not falling on deaf ears. So yeah. All right, guys. Um, make sure you keep coding passionately. Put out those awesome frameworks and um, yeah. Have a good rest of your day. Code passionately.